Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for round number four of the season for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. If you guys missed round three at Bahrain, you can go watch the episode by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of your screen. But before we jump into any major spoilers, but this weekend we're here at Baku. You can see on the screen we have a chance of rain in qualifying. The race is going to be dry and sunny, but qualifying could be a bit of an interesting session. In terms of this race, though, we do have two upgrades on the car. Our first two upgrades officially on the McLaren in the form of two minor engine power upgrades, which are going to make a big difference because we're actually going to close the gap quite a bit to Williams and Racing Point in both the engine department and also the overall pecking order in terms of the R&D performance. You can see there, we're pretty much now the third top team and Red Bull now has a bit of a gap to that team in fourth and then there's a bigger gap to Alfa Romeo in fifth. So it's looking like a bit of a top three, top four at the moment and like I said before, those four teams are looking like the ones that are going to go for the championship this season. But we jump into practice and the car felt pretty decent. Um, You know, this was always a funny one for me because I can never find any real consistency around this track. I'm not a big fan of Baku. I generally don't enjoy the track. And it was kind of a hard one to really find where I stood. And we seem to be having a lot of uh, pace in the final sector where the big straight is. And the car's very, very quick on the straight. And I'm running pretty damn low wings by, by, by the look of it. But if I run higher wings, it doesn't quite work as you'd intend it to be because I still lose time anyway for the first couple of sectors. So it just suits me to have a lower like drag setup around here. It seems to be the quicker way to, to, to go through it. But uh, nonetheless, qualifying is now on the cards here as practice is done and dusted. And we had a pretty good session scoring, you know, almost maximum points. But now in qualifying, like I said before, we do have that chance of rain. So we're, we're going to try and get out on the track straight away because any lap you can get around here is going to be crucial. We don't, we don't have any idea when the rain is going to arrive. And, you know, we might get one run, we might get two runs. We might get no runs, you just don't know where the weather is, so we're going to try and uh, get out of there nice and quickly and hopefully set a decent benchmark. I hate these kind of situations because it's down to one lap and you've got to be absolutely perfect and Baku isn't the best track for that because I never really feel confident around here, so it's kind of a shot in the dark and it's just a question of whether I can really nail the lap. So let's run the board then for a full lap of the Baku City Circuit here, just trying to get some temperature into my tyres as, as, as we get ready for the start of the lap. And uh, we're going to open up the RS right about now, maximise the speed trap here, hitting 350 k's almost as we make our way down to turn one. And you want to break as the curb appears on the right hand side, down to third gear, clip the inside apex and cut the power straight away. Really, really strong turn one as we now go to, to, towards turn two, break at the 100 meter board, down to third, clip the inside curb again and try and get the power as soon as you can. And then quickly back on the ERS onto overtake mode along this long straight down towards turn number three. Look for the 100 meter board on the right hand side as your reference down to third gear and again clip the inside curve, use all the runoff on in the outside if you need it and then bring the car to the left hand side to open up turn four quickly back on the throttle on the exit and that was actually a incredible sector one, my strongest I think ever sector one I've ever done in this game but uh, then unfortunately for us sector two and three weren't as good and I was kind of annoyed really but you'll see now as we go towards the next right hand here I get a little bit too hot on the brakes and uh, miss my apex, you want to really attack the inside curve there and really get on the inside as we now go into the castle section again not really attacking the inside corner there I left a bit too much space on the left and I could have created a bit more momentum and then we got really wide on the exit of the castle section there as well so not the best sector two so far as we go over through these kind of couple of kinks and now into this downhill left hander where you want to really take a big chunk of the inside curb because that's the quickest way to navigate the corner quickly back on the throttle and then down the hill to the last brake zone on the circuit again breaking a bit too early there we're four tenths down on Sebastian Vettel currently as it stands and we're now full throttle to the finish line and this is where I was pretty strong in practice so we're going to see what that is like as Sebastian Vettel currently with a 34.5 set in the pace he gets beaten by Charlotte Close it's a 33.6 and we're going to see what we can do now as we open DRS and we run up to the line. And let's see where this lap is going to put us in the shuffle across the line. And it's a 34.9. And it's not that great, to be honest. Slower than Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. And only good enough for P4. Eventually, we got pushed down the order to P13. And I tried to go for another lap. You can see here for sector one, I tried my best. But we were just losing too much time. The rain started to fall. And eventually, I just gave up because the pace just wasn't there. So I just completely backed off and gave up on the lap and we actually are going to end up the session in 13th place so disappointing really 1.2 off the pace and 7 tenths off my teammate as well which was quite annoying I think I had pace to get into the top 10 I, th I really think on a good lap I think 8th place ahead of Perez would have definitely been possible but it is what it is we didn't maximise the session and we've got to deal with the consequences in the race but uh, hopefully we'll try and turn it around and we'll have the advantage of the tyres in strategy to have free tyre choice so hopefully that will help us out but nonetheless that's it for qualifying here at Baku and we're now going to move into the race around four for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix.
Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge, where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequences for all of our drivers. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Martinez. No grip penalties, no mitigating circumstances, just a poor qualifying performance and a very disappointing start position for them today. It's not a nice feeling, I promise you. They've got a quick car underneath them, but they've got onto the grid today and they need a pair of binoculars to see the start lights. They'll be desperate for a good start to make up for some of that deficit. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Pierre Gasly, and Russell, Magnussen, Vettel, Bottas, and Alexander Albon, Ricardo, Martinez, Sergio Perez. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Giovinazzi, Fiat, Holkenberg, Kimi Raikkonen, and Lance Stroll, Norris, and Roman Grosjean sits at the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Starting from 12th place on the 6th row, we've been promoted by one position due to Sergio Perez's 5th place grid penalty, but still we, qu we are quite a way off the pace and quite a far away from where we want to be on the grid. Having said that, we do have an opportunity here with strategy to try and make something happen in this race, and that's exactly what we're going to try and do as we start the race on the mediums, and I'm going to try and stretch it to a set of soft tyres at the end. It's a bit of an audacious strategy and one that I have done in the past. You do struggle a bit of tyre wear at certain times, but it is one that is doable and tends to be quite a decent one for overall race pace. In terms of fuel, we're running one extra lap of fuel as well, so we can push when we need to. And the target is simple, really. I want to try and at least get into the points and hopefully have a decent race. So let's jump into it and let's see if we can have a good performance here today at Baku. So let's jump into it. It's time for round four for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Right, here we go then. Let's try and get a good start first and foremost as the five red lights come on. Lights out and away we go. It's a good start. We match Albon in front of us, who's also on medium tyres. Into turn one, Perez looking for the outside. We're going to hold it on the inside, struggling for some traction early on. Inside for turn two. Can we hold it here, Perez, on the outside? We're going to just try and squeeze him off there. And there we go. We hold on to P12. But Perez might come back at us here. This is a good test to see what our straight line speed is like. We will improve straight line speed, should I say. It's 3 1 in front of us here. This could end ugly. Our Romero, Ferrari and Mercedes. I was looking on the outside of Albon there. Didn't quite work, but we have got the switch back on him. If I can just get the traction down, side by side. Around the outside here. Can we pull this one off? Inside for the next one. I've got to leave some room. But we do make it work. And we just get in front of Albon there. Up to 11th place. Good overtake. Getting past the only guy on the mediums that I can see around me, which is important for strategy. So now, can we hang on to the top 10? Can we keep the pace? We know Bottas isn't that quick. The Mercedes and Ferrari aren't, isn't the fast cars. We get a massive bit of oversteer there. Rear tyres are critical around this track. You want to try and keep them in as long as you can. But uh, so far, so good. As we make our way into the end of sector two, into sector three. Let's see if we can keep pace with the guys in front on these medium tyres. I'll be impressed if we do. My race pace, though, having said that, has always been much better than my one lap pace around here. Literally, for like the last three F1 games now, my one lap pace around here, I can't match the AI, so this is, this is better for us. And they're already in the slipstream of Bottas, who's struggling to hold on to the cars in front, and is losing out on the slipstream. As a consequence, we're getting a massive amount of slipstream here on the Mercedes. We're not close enough to challenge into turn one, but we are going to put some pressure on him. As Kafiat makes a move for P12 in the other also, so both Italian... Uh, the Italian team, both cars, are on mediums. 
as uh, we're trying to put some pressure on Bottas here, but I think without DRS it's not going to happen just yet. We might have a look at him at the end of the lap though, unless we get the run here. We are gaining quite a bit to be fair, but we're going to run out straight. So yeah, let's get head down and let's try and make some progress, because I think Bottas is definitely not that quick. We've got a lot more pace than Bottas. Let's try and make this move. I'll take the normal line, I'll be fair to the AI. And so we now go into the last break zone here. Kind of and try and get a good exit. Unfortunately, Bottas has got himself back into slipstream range. But I think we should still have enough to get past the Mercedes. We're already catching him here. Look at this. We've got a lot more speed. We're going to walk past on the straight. We're going to go to the right-hand side. Let's have the better racing line for turn one. And there we go. Into the top ten we move. Good start so far. Car's working well. And DRS is now enabled. Race officials have enabled DRS. DRS is now available. Nice and important to stay in front of Bottas because he's going to probably have DRS on me on this straight. Unless I get DRS on Ricardo, which I don't. So here we go. We've got to try and stay in front of the Mercedes. I think we should be okay. We've got a nice gap. And uh, yeah, I don't think Bottas is going to challenge. So there we go. Job done. P10. It's so hard to get yourself within DRS range, especially on medium tyres when everyone in front of you got, has got a slipstream. Another personal best though. A good lap from us in clean air. And uh, we now got Bottas here and Ricardo battling away. Which is good for us because that will hopefully help us close the gap a little bit. No DRS just yet, but I'm hoping I might have it at the end of the lap. There's a bit of a train in front. Signs is in it. I'm hoping he can also make some progress and get past a few cars. Okay, we're within range of Sebastian Vettel here. So we're going to try and set him up for an overtake. I'm actually burning up this bridge for me. It's quicker than I thought, which is not ideal. Here we go. Let's try and get the run on Sebastian. I think he might still have DRS on Ricardo. Let's find out. No, he doesn't. Okay, this is my chance then. Let's try and get past him into turn one. We're gaining 353 Ks. We're going to go to the outside. We're going to go the long way around. Oh, that's a move and a half. That is fantastic. Sebastian had nowhere to go. We pinned him into the apex beautifully and we made the move as Ricardo actually gets past George Russell, surprisingly. So George Russell in the, in the Red Bull not going that well. But we're up to P9. Good progress. Let's keep going. Okay, so Ricardo will have the run on Russell here. Russell doesn't have DRS on anybody, so he's going to be defenseless for two whole straights. It looks like Ricardo isn't running a particularly high engine mode here, so we are going to get the run on him in the Alfa Romeo, and as a consequence, we're getting a double toe on George Russell. We're going to go to the outside, because I can't really go anywhere else. I want to do the exact same thing I did on Sebastian, on Ricardo. I had a look around the outside of George Russell there, but he just blocked me off. Ricardo coming back at me down the inside of turn two here, but we're just going to hold it around the outside once more and stay in front. That gives Russell a bit of time to pull away, so we can't quite put pressure on him just yet, but we're up to eighth place now. Again, making more progress. Okay, we're right on the back of Russell now. Putting the pressure on big time. Let's try and get past the Red Bull driver as I get very close to that wall. Let's just stay within range as we go through the end of the lap, and we should be able to pass him with DRS assistance quite comfortably as uh, we're really, really close. Also, Ricardo is pretty close as well behind us. Here we go then. I don't even think I need rich mix for this. I think we'll be able to have enough to get past the Red Bull. Here we go. We're gaining. Already making the difference without DRS. This is going to be quite a bit of a high speed trap, this one. Must be open DRS now as cars actually pit in as well. Carlos is in the pits. Going to the inside. Job done. Easy move. And up to P3 we go. Hamilton and Leclerc, I believe, still out front. But job done, getting past the Red Bull of uh, George Russell. Now let's try and pull away here to make sure he doesn't come back at us and try and use the clean air to push. Very important phase of the race. We've got to try and have some good pace. Okay, Hamilton and the Williams of, I believe, Charles Leclerc pit in. Russell pits in as well, as does the Arif Romeo. So we are going to take the race lead for a little while. As Leclerc's going to rejoin behind us on the hard tyres, as does Hamilton. But P1 for us, clean it. Let's use it now. We've got to try and use these laps to really make sure we can get to the soft tyre. Therefore, I've got to try and drive at a good pace, but also I've got to be easy on the tyres. A new strategy is available on the MFT. Understood, copy that. Yeah, that's what we're going to go for. That's what I had in mind the whole time. The one stop run for the soft tyres. Pace looks good so far as well. Good pace, personal best. This is what we want. Overall, good lap times. Leclerc isn't really catching me at the minute. He's gaining a couple of tenths a lap, but it's really not much. And I've got a good amount of VRS yet to use, which is good. Car's working well, and I think we're on course to make this strategy work. 
If I can keep the club behind me before I appear, that'd be ideal. So I don't waste no time battling. But we'll see how it progresses. Either way, I'm liking this so far. Pace is still good. Leclerc slowly starting to close in now. Make progress. You see my current tyre work. Not that bad. Quite happy with things as it stands. But I think Leclerc might have a look at us. And he might have a chance of overtaking us. So um, I'm going to try and defend. Because if I can feed him into Hamilton, that would help us out. Because Leclerc is starting to run away with it in the championship otherwise. If he keeps winning races. Currently on a really strong lap here. Six tenths up on my personal best. I've just absolutely nailed every single corner. I've also used a bit more engine mode than I normally would on this lap just because I was improving. Let's see what it is across the line. 38.2. That's good because that takes the clear off us a little bit. We actually uh, pull away a little bit on that lap, which is good. Let's keep going. Pace is really strong at the minute and the tyre is consistent. The car is consistent. Two more laps to go. This one and one more before we box in. Right, some information on Hamilton. They have some kind of mechanical problem. Ooh, okay, that's good news for us because he's in third place. He could drop back a little bit and we've got one more lap left so we might have a chance of catching him maybe in the final stint depending on what our pace is like on the soft tyre. Either way, another good lap here. This is looking pretty damn good. And we're going to box in now on lap 18. In this lap, in this lap, push now. Let's have one more strong lap here for the in-lap and then we're going to go for the soft tyre. Here we go then. The in-lap hasn't been great. I have struggled with my tyres quite a bit on this lap. Really starting to go in there. You can see the tyre wear for yourselves. 50%, 54 on the left rear, but it feels worse than that. Such a really limited circuit. We're going to pit in though. We're going to push this pit entry as much as we can. Without being too over the top. And there we go. That's pretty decent. There goes a struggling Hamilton. He's going to flash by in a second, which is uh, our target really. I think we can maybe get third. There we go, fourth place. We've already done the pit stop. I think we're going to rejoin in P5 here. A ahead of signs. Yes, we are. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Now that is fantastic. The overcut on the medium has worked out beautifully. We had great pace. And we've actually overcut so many cars. And we're up to P5. And I can smell a podium here. Magnuson in fourth, Hamilton in third. This is doable. This tyre feels fantastic. The car is absolutely flying. Purple middle sector, and it'll probably be a purple final sector as well. Hamilton and Verstappen are battling for P2, so that's actually where we can finish in this race, not third. It's actually a second place on the cards. I'm now going to turn the engine up and focus on the purple lap here because I think we can also score an extra point. The good news is the hard tyre is such a hard tyre, it's just not that quick. So you can really, you know, have a big advantage with the soft tyre at the end if you can make it, and even the medium as well. It's a really good tyre that's hard, it's just not a tyre. You want to run around here. I learned that the hard way a couple of years ago on the F1 2017 game, I believe. But look at this battle in front. Hamilton visibly struggling. We are going to hit Hamilton this lap, so he might ruin our chances of a purple lap, possibly. Either way, I'm going to keep pushing because I think we still have got enough in the tank. Especially if we, if we get DRS on the, on, the, on, the, on the pit straight in this lap. As a slingshot, we should be able to make up the lap. So let's push on. So we're now going to put pressure on Lewis here. You can see how much he's really struggling for the corners. I'm going to get held up for the cost section, I think. Yes, I am. Not ideal. So we're going to have to be patient and just wait and let Hamilton tackle it. And we'll get him on the exit of this one. So up the switch back. And there we go. Power down. We're only a tenth down on our delta, so we should be okay here. As we take the inside line. There we go. Job done. That was close. Well, it wasn't enough, 38 0. So we'll have to go again. We'll try again this lap. Let's see if we can get up a snap in a Magnuson as well. Now we're tucked in behind these guys. We're going to get held up a little bit. Not majorly, like with Lewis, but. We have five laps of fuel remaining. But we are still getting frustrated for lap time, but we are 1.5 up on our previous best here, so a massive difference. Let's just keep it nice and tidy and not throw away now. We lost a bit of time there. That wasn't the best line. The curb really put me up in the air. But we might have a chance of making a double overtake. And we are going to get DRS as well to help us out. So this should be the lap. This should do the trick. Let's get the run through here. There we go. Now let's see if we can try and get past these guys. I'm about to run out of fuel as well. Let's keep it in rich mix. Let's see if we can put some pressure on Leclerc. Also on Magnuson, sorry. Here we go. We're gaining. We are going to get the massive slingshot down towards turn one. Okay, clear. 
There we go around the outside of Magnuson, yellow flag behind. And we did set the purple lap, so that's that done as well. Now can we get past Verstappen here? I'll be too far back. I think I'm too far back, unfortunately. Hamilton out in the racing point. Too many car issues. All right, let's get past Verstappen then, and then take second place. Here we are then, let's make this an easy one on Verstappen. I've been running low engine modes on this now to save some fuel in the RS so we can go for one last attack and make it a definitive move. Because if we do get past it, we're going to have to defend on the next straight. But we're gaining on Verstappen here. It seems like he's also run out of engine mode himself. We're gaining. 300. Can we get it before the yellow flag zone? Yes, we do. It actually turns green, so that takes the pressure off. And job done, up to P2. Really strong race, this one strategy was perfect and there we go second place let's trample away now and secure this with the extra point for the fastest lap that's exactly what we want here we go then in towards the end of the, sec the second sector and into the start of sector three and it's taken four races but we are finally on target to get our first podium for McLaren as the closing going to come through to win the Azerbaijan Grand Prix for Williams and once again extending his championship lead we're going to come home for a phenomenal second place plus the fastest lap which means 19 points for us and also Carlos Sainz in P5 makes it a strong double points finish for us in McLaren as we go into the European season but I'll take that podium get in thank you for all your hard work out there that was a strong drive and a good finish well done here they are then coming into Park Ferme and an excellent win for the Williams team Anthony Davidson what helped them deliver this result do you think well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Williams have put in an incredible performance out on the track today. I'm glad all the hard work of theirs has finally paid off. a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? You must be thrilled to be up on the podium. You really looked in control of your car out there. Your team must be thrilled. Do you think your rival learned from his battle with you? Great, well that's everything. Right, so looking at the final race results, Charles Leclerc wins it for Williams here today ahead of ourselves and Kevin Magnussen making it a 1-3 for Williams. Uh, Max Verstappen P4 missing out on the podium in the end by less than a tenth of a second in a drag race to the line as Carlos Sainz picks up P5 ahead of Pierre Gasly in a strong sixth there for Alfa Romeo ahead of Sergio Perez, George Russell, Daniel Ricciardo and Sebastian Vettel scoring the final point ahead of Albon, Kofiat, Bottas, Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Norris, Raikkonen, Stroll, Giovinazzi and Hamilton, the only retirement of the Grand Prix here today in the other racing point. In terms of the driver standings after that race, we jump up to fourth place and overtake Lewis Hamilton and George Russell and Kevin Magnussen. Science down to eighth place, but still it's looking pretty good for us and some strong points. But, uh, Leclerc leading now by 24 points. He's got quite a gap to Perez in second and we're only two points behind Max Verstappen here. So it's looking pretty good. In terms of the constructors though, you can see Williams overtake racing point for the top spot and those two split by nine points ahead of Red Bull who are 40 points adrift and we are eight points behind Red Bull. 
ball. So it's still a top four, but uh, you've definitely got two blocks there with Williams of Racing Point, and then there's Racing, uh, Red Bull Racing and McLaren, and then there's the rest. So overall, guys, that's it for the race here at Azerbaijan. But we're now going to move into the next race at Spain and the start of the European season. We do have an upgrade on the way for that race as well. So uh, hopefully that will help us out. It's an upgrade for the brakes, I believe, on the chassis. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and also get subscribed if you are new for daily Formula 1 content and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and also finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next episode very soon but until then it's goodbye from me